Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video. All right, let's be honest, this, this whole coronavirus thing is really, it's turning out to be a giant pain in the ass. I mean, good lord, school districts, community centers, you know, all kinds of professional and collegiate sports, I mean, everything is just shutting down around us, uh, you know, to, obviously to help prevent the spread of the virus. And look, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that we should be going out there and not distancing, our, distancing ourselves Socially, obviously, we we don't want this virus to spin out of control. It's just really, really inconvenient uh, for those, uh, you know, for those of you managing an active federal grant. So, what can you do if your organization is temporarily closed or on reduced operating hours or in a work-from-home situation that will impact your federal grant program? Well... Let's talk about it. Okay, now if you're still open, this one will be a challenge since so many public and private organizations are closing for the next two to eight weeks. If, um, if your area is anything like uh, Nevada, where I'm currently located, we today uh, are closing ev just about everything down for the next 30 days. So, I don't know. Anyway. So, uh, if your organization is still open and operating, even if at a slightly reduced capacity, you know, see, see if you can modify uh, your grant program to be delivered in a virtual or online platform. Uh, if this requires a significant expense, you know, obviously make sure to check with your program officer before spending the money. Chances are they will approve it, but it's better safe than sorry. Uh, be sure to check up, uh, or, sorry, to keep up with uh, the CDC's guidelines for in-person gatherings if that's how your program operates. Um, originally, they said gatherings of more, no more than, what was it, 250 people. Then it was lowered to 50, and now I'm hearing that it's as low as 10 people. So if you have to serve less than 10 people at a time, you're going to need some type of appointment system and a waiting list so that you can control the number of attendees while maximizing the number of people uh, you can serve. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, if you're not able to provide the service you proposed in your grant application, you know, maybe it could be modified temporarily, your program itself, to serve as a resource for those affected by the coronavirus. And now this one's a long shot because if you modify your program too much, it'll fall outside the scope of your approved proposal and your expenses could be disallowed. But if it could be tweaked slightly and still fulfill the overall spirit of your application and the grant funding's purpose, uh, it might be a tremendous help to your community. Again, Check with your program officer first uh, before making any major changes. Talk it through with them. Uh, send them your proposed changes and get it, get it approved in writing before moving forward. Now, if you're closed, all right. If your grant program is just completely halted for the foreseeable future, there are a few things you need to consider and you'll need to address them with your program officer and in your progress reports. First, your program activities and your scope of work. Which activities and other events will be impacted by the shutdown? Can they be postponed to a later date or will they have to be canceled outright? Uh, you know, and how many people does this affect? That is, if you were planning to serve 100 people, for example, uh, at the activities which are now canceled, can those 100 participants be served after you reopen? Or is there no way to make up that lost ground? Next, how... Will your, uh, your temporary suspension impact your program evaluation? 
And this, this ties back in with your activities and your scope of work. Uh, this is a good time to talk to your program officer about modifying your goals and objectives. I mean, you can't be held accountable for something that's outside of your control. And obviously, this virus is outside of everybody's control. So, you know, you obviously want to measure your performance based on your efforts. And that's not possible if you're shut down for you know, two weeks, four weeks, or maybe even a couple of months. You know, what your program officer will probably tell you is just go ahead and keep your existing goals and objectives as is. Don't make any changes. And just note in your evaluation and progress reports why you, uh, why you felt short of meeting your objectives and your outcomes, if that's ultimately what happens. Now, this is not ideal, but, you know, given that every, every other grantee is in the same boat, it's probably the most efficient and realistic approach uh, from the awarding agency's perspective. And finally, your budget. With, uh, with operations suspended, you're obviously not going to be spending money at the same rate as you were if uh, you were open for business. So this is a good time to look at your budget and estimate how much you won't be spending during this period. And depending on <clears throat> excuse me, what you had planned, this could be a significant amount. Uh, and if it's a good, chunk, a good chunk of change, start thinking about how you can reallocate those funds to spend them before the end of the program year, assuming they can't be used for their original purpose. You know, the thing is, you don't want to leave any money on the table. Uh, if you can't spend those, those funds before the end of the program year, maybe start planning now uh, to carry them over into the next year if you have a multi-year grant, or start considering a one-year extension if this is the final year of your project. Okay, now, <clears throat> let me go a little deeper into that last point, because it's applicable to all grantees, whether, you're, whether or not you're open or closed during this whole virus period. Uh, if you have a one-year grant, or if you're in the final year of a multi-year grant, now would be a good time to start thinking about a one-year no-cost extension for your program. Now, don't get caught up on that terminology. It's called a no-cost extension because it doesn't quote-unquote cost the federal government anything. That is, you won't receive any additional grant funds. You'll simply be able to use what funds you have remaining to carry out program activities and your objectives. Um, extensions are really easy to obtain. They're available to all federal grantees. You simply need to notify your program officer that you intend to extend your grant. Uh, at that point, <clears throat> excuse me again, at that point, you'll have a conversation with them about the purpose for the extension, how much time you need, you know, whether it's one month, six months, the entire 12 months, or something in between, and your proposed budget. Now, uh, an extension cannot be used just to spend leftover funds. If you're sitting on a pile of unspent funds and you want to use that extra time to buy a bunch of, oh, I don't know, new computers, some new iPads, a fancy new copier, a, a drone, I mean, I don't know, other office equipment, you know, forget it. That won't fly. Uh, the purpose of extensions is to, is to further your program activities and, and your reach. You know, in many cases, organizations have, uh, you know, um, a lot of unspent funds at the end of their grant because their initial estimates, cost estimates, or their expenses didn't cost as much as they originally budgeted. So instead of returning that money to the feds, well, why not uh, keep going 
for an additional period of time so you can accomplish more. I mean, that's a win-win for you and the funding agency. All right, well, that's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help in any way that I can, from a distance, of course. Let's be responsible now. (laughs) This is, I'll tell you, this is a strange time for all of us, but we're going to get through it. Just hang in there. If you found this useful, please like it or give it a thumbs up, and feel free to leave a comment. I always enjoy feedback. Of course, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. All right, cool. Thanks, and I will see you next time.